for our first and only lesson in Module 10, which is titled Transformations and Similarity. We're going to be looking at 10.1 on Properties of Dilations. As been typical with Module 9, we're going to start off with some terminology, some vocabulary, and then we'll jump into some examples of how to use dilations. Our first vocabulary word is based on the title of the lesson, which is the term dilation, which can be defined as a change in the size of a figure. The shape of the figure, however, will stay the same. So anytime you have two figures that are the exact same shape but are different sizes, that's because of a dilation. For example, a, a toy or a model car that is supposed to represent an actual car is a dilation of the original car. You take the image of the original car, shrink it way down, and you have the the image of the model car. Our next term is called center of dilation, which can be defined as the point of intersection of the lines formed by the corresponding vertices in a dilation. And we'll see what that means in just a little bit, little bit as we go through some examples. Before we look at some examples, there is one more thing I want you to note, which a uh, couple things in this note. First of all, a dilated figure and its image are similar meaning that they have the same shape, but different size. They also have the same orientation, so two things there. They're similar, and they have the same orientation. Just like a translation in its image will have the same orientation, same thing is true with dilated figures as well. For our first example, we have two quadrilaterals in a coordinate grid. We have the original pre-image or the original figure as quadrilateral ABCD and then we have our image of that quadrilateral as A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. Now in the table I give you the name of all the points and the coordinates of all the points as well. So I want you to take a moment, copy down the graph, copy down the table including all the points and all the coordinates, and then what I want you to do is I want you to take a moment to see if you can identify a pattern that will get you from the coordinates for each of the original points here to the coordinates for all of your prime points over here. What, what do we do to these coordinates here to get to these coordinates here? Likewise, for point B and B prime, how do we get from these points to these coordinates and these coordinates to these for C? And for D and D prime, how do we get from negative 2, negative 2? to negative 4 comma negative 4. My guess is that it won't take you that long to figure out what the pattern is, but what I want you to do is when you get it, write it down, and then we'll discuss this in just a moment. So take a few moments, copy these things down, and then consider how we get from the original figure coordinates to the image coordinates. Pause the video now and copy this down if you've not done so already. Alright, by now, hopefully you all have the figures copied down in the coordinate grid. You have the table and all the information within copied down as well. And now I want to talk about the relationship between the coordinates of the original figure coordinates, or the values of the original coordinates, and the values of the prime coordinates. And it's my hope that you recognize what we need to do to get from these numbers to these numbers, to get from all these points here to these points here. And so if you'll notice, what we have to do is we have to multiply every single value of the coordinates. All the x values and all the y values get multiplied by the exact same value to get the prime x values and the prime y values. And that value for this table, for this example, and this is not going to be the case for all of them, but in this case, that coordinate or that value is 2. We take the number 2, multiply it by all these x values to get these x values here. Then we take 2 again, multiply by all these y values to equal these y values here. And that introduces us to the concept of scale factor. So it's our next term that we're going to copy down, so go ahead and write down the term scale factor. So our term again is scale factor, which is represented by a lowercase k, just like we use m for slope, we use b for y-intercept, 
we use k for scale factor. So k scale factor is the value multiplied by the coordinates of a figure to find its dilated image. Now there's a little bit more to go along with that. The scale factor can either make the image bigger or smaller than the original figure. And here's how you can identify if the image is going to be become bigger or smaller than the original figure. So if the scale factor at the value for k is greater than 1, then the image will be larger than the pre-image. This is called an enlargement. So what you end up with will be bigger than what you started with. On the other hand, however, if the value for k is less than 1, if it's in between 0 and 1, then the image will be smaller than the pre-image. This, this is called a reduction. So in this case, where if k were uh, between 0 and 1, then the image, the figure that you end up with, will be smaller than the figure that you start out with. And again, this is called a reduction. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. One where we'll have an enlargement, one where we'll have a reduction. For our second example, we're told to dilate triangle ABC by a scale factor of k equals 2.5. So what we want to do for this problem is, easiest way, write down the coordinates for all three points, then multiply each value of the ordered pairs by 2.5 to get your prime points. Then once you have the coordinates of the prime points, go ahead and plot those. So let's go ahead and write down all the points along with their coordinates. So for point A, we have at 0, 0,2. Point B is at the ordered pair 1, comma, negative 2. And then for point C, we have negative 2, comma, negative 2. So we're going to take all six of these numbers, multiply them by our scale factor of 2.5 to get the value of our prime points. So for A, when we multiply 0, comma, 2 by 2.5, we're going to get a prime, which has coordinates at 0, comma, 5. And again, I got that by taking 2.5 times 0. 0 times 2.5 gives me 0. And then I took 2 times 2.5, giving me a value of 5. All right, so that's how I got a prime. Now for b prime, I'm going to take 1 and multiply it by 2.5, which ends up giving me 2.5. And then negative 2 times 2.5 is going to give me negative 5. And finally for point C, to get C prime, we multiply negative 2 times 2.5, which is going to give us negative 5, comma, negative 5. And now that we've got the coordinates for all of our prime points, we're going to go ahead and plot those points on our same coordinate grid. So starting with A prime at 0, comma, 5, we have a point right up here. It may be hard to see, so there's A prime. I'm going to go ahead and label it A prime. Then for B prime, it's at 2.5 comma negative 5. So I'm going to go right 2 and a half. So I go right 1, 2 and a half, and then down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so that's where I'm going to put my coordinate for B prime. So here's my B prime, label it B prime. All right, and then finally for C prime, I'm at negative five comma negative five, so that's left five down five, and that is where my point for C prime is going to go. So here's my C prime. Now once I have my coordinates all drawn, go ahead and connect them with straight lines, and there we get the dilated figure of triangle ABC, which is A prime, B prime, and C prime. As a reminder, you need to make sure that you are using a straight edge when drawing your lines. Obviously, my lines don't look perfectly straight. That's because I cannot put a ruler on my iPad to draw a line. You need to use a ruler and graph paper when you are drawing your lines. Right, let's take a look at one more example. Example two, we should see that that was an enlargement because our prime figure, our prime image got bigger than the original. For example, 3, we'll look, for, we'll look at a reduction in which our image is going to be smaller than our original figure. 
For our final example in Module 10, Lesson 1, we are told to dilate figure DEFG by a scale factor of K equals 1 half. Now we see that since K is 1 half, that's in between 0 and 1, we know that this is going to be a reduction, so our figure is going to be smaller than the original that we're starting off with here. We approach this problem the same way that we approached the previous example. We're going to write down the coordinates of each point, then multiply the values of the coordinates by one half to find our prime points. So starting with point D, we have coordinates at 4, 8. For point E, we have 6, 6. For point F, we have 2, 10. And for point G, we have 2, comma, zero. My mistake on point F, the coordinates there are 10, comma, two. So for each four ordered pairs, we're going to take the values of the ordered pairs, so these eight numbers here, multiply them by our scale value, our scale factor, which is one half, to find our prime points. Now, we should recall multiplying by half is the same thing as dividing by two. So essentially, I'm going to be taking all eight of those values, dividing them by two to find my prime points. So for D prime, multiplying four comma eight, those numbers by one half, we're going to get two comma four. For E prime, multiplying six comma six by a half, we're going to get three comma three. For F prime, Multiplying 10 comma 2 by 1 half is going to give us 5 comma 1. And finally, multiplying 2 comma 0 by 1 half for G prime is going to give us 1 comma 0. Now that we've got all four of those coordinates, we're going to go ahead and plot those points. So first for D prime at 2 comma 4, we go right 2 and up 1, 2, 3, 4. And that gets us D prime. For E prime, that's at 3 comma 3, so it's right 3 and up 3 for E prime. For F prime, that's going to be at 5 comma 1, so that's right 5 and up 1. And I just recognized another mistake for E, those coordinates are going to be 8 comma 6, so I had to change this, which changes this value to a 4, which also changes my point here to 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. There we go. That's going to be give us E prime. Then finally, for uh, let me plot F prime. So we have F prime at 5, 1. And then for G prime, that's going to be at 1, 0. And now that we have our points plotted, we go ahead and draw our lines connecting those points. And there is what our reduction looks like. A reduction of our original figure by a scale factor of 1 half gets us prime figure D prime, E prime, F prime, and G prime. That brings us to the end of Module 10, Lesson 1. Hopefully, in going through that lesson, we have a better understanding on the properties of dilations. And I'm just recognizing that I forgot the goal, so give me a moment on that. So our goal for this lesson was to understand the properties of dilations and then use scale factor to dilate a figure to find its image. Hopefully, after going through those examples and those definitions, you're able to do that. Write down any questions or comments you might have so that we can go over those in class tomorrow.